Good morning, Stephanie. God bless you. Good morning. How you doing this morning? I pray that you are doing well on this terrific Thursday. Good morning, Daniela. God bless you. Hey, Sister Marilyn. Hey, Sister Bessie. Sister Suzette, God bless you. Hey, Lonnie. Great morning to you. Thank you so much, Sister Suzette. God bless you all. It is so awesome to see you all coming on this morning on this beautiful and amazing Thursday. Hey, Sister Cheryl, God bless you and good morning to you. Do me a favor, as you all are coming on, click share and invite others to join us this morning. I believe we're just gonna have a powerful time together. God bless you too. God bless you, Regina, good morning. God bless you, hey, Deanna, God bless you. Amen. Amen. Are y'all ready to get into the word this morning? Because I'm excited. If you're ready, say ready. Good morning, Sister Helene. Hugs to you. I am just so excited to see all of you all this morning. As we do, we come together and we just allow the word of God to, you know, to, to um, inspire us, to motivate us. Amen. Hey, Teresa, good morning. You're ready, Sister Suzette? Praise God. Anybody else out there ready this morning? Ready to hear what God's word has to say? Sister Bessie, you're ready? Praise God. Praise God. I'm ready too. All right, so this morning, I'm going to do something a little different, but I do believe that it's going to be a blessing to each of us. You're ready, Daniela? Amen. Amen, Deanna. Praise God. So let's just go ahead and open up with a word of prayer. Father God, we just thank you for this day, God. We thank you, God, that you are God and we are not. We thank you, God, that we don't have to figure all things out, that if we just place it in your hands, that your word promises that you will work all things together for our good and for your glory. So Father God, we just ask that you will you know, help us to set aside the cares of the world for this moment so that our hearts will be receptive, our ears will be inclined to hear what your word wants to speak directly to us this morning. We thank you for the opportunity to come together from all around the world and just come together in unity. The Bible tells us that when uh, the, they were in unity in the upper room, when they were on one accord, your Holy Spirit was able to sweep through the place. So help us to be on one accord this morning so that your Holy Spirit can sweep through and, and just take over and that we can all walk away from this life just knowing and believing that you were with each of us. So we just give you the praise, the honor, and all the glory this morning and every day. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Good morning, Sister Sally. Good morning, Sister Cynthia. Good morning, good morning to those of you that are coming on. Praise the Lord. So listen, this morning, this is what I am led to do. Many of you are probably familiar with the book by Sarah Young, Jesus Calling. Are you all familiar with this book? Good morning, Tanisha. God bless you. This is a powerful, powerful book. If you don't have it, I suggest that you get it. If you're a person that really likes to be inspired in the morning, good morning, Sister Miriam. It is powerful. And so this morning, I'm led to read and share from this book this morning as the Holy Spirit just really just, I believe, just settles some thing, things in our heart this morning. Amen. So let's just go to to the word this morning and like i said i'm going to be reading out of jesus calling today is january 17th come on y'all where is january going it is it is zooming by i mean i remember saying let's get ready for 2019 and here we are 2019 is here y'all but anyway january 17th jesus calling by sarah young after we read this we're going to really just go into a time of prayer and trusting god to really steal this in our hearts this morning here's what it says it says come to me with a thankful heart come to me with a thankful heart 
See, that right off the bat, that has to change some of our attitudes this morning. Uh, trust me, I know what it's like to wake up in the morning and the first things that hit your mind are the problems. Anybody know what I'm talking about this morning? That the first thing, as soon as your eyes pop open, the first thing you think about is what's wrong. The first thing you think about is what you need that you don't have. The first thing you think about is that conflict that you're having. But the, the word instructs instructs us to come to God with a thankful heart. Listen, I, I'm, I'm just saying, no matter what I'm going through, there's always something. Somebody say something. There's always something that we can be thankful for. There's always something that we can be grateful for. I remember as we were doing um, a, um, a workshop the other day, and I don't remember which one it was, but we did several of them uh, last year. But on this particular workshop, um, you know, Pastor Trina, she was the speaker. And she says, we got to celebrate even the small steps, the small things, you know. And one of the sisters that was on there, you know, she said, we said, you know, what are you grateful for? What's the small step that you can celebrate? And she said that she was celebrating the fact that she didn't slap somebody on that particular day. And listen, I know that sounds funny but listen we can all listen if, if you're a person that you know gets agitated easily give God thanks that you were able to keep your your attitude under submission hello somebody if you are a person that you know you go to food when you're feeling sad when you're feeling lonely when you're feeling down and you did not do that yesterday give God thanks what I'm saying is there's always something to be thankful for you didn't get you didn't cuss nobody out on the highway on the way the job even though your job even though several people cut you off your 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 manager your boss says something to you like she always does like he always does that irritates you but you didn't give him the side eye you didn't roll your eyes you didn't go back to your desk and yeah come on now i'm just saying am i speaking the truth sister stephanie i'm just saying right so we there's always something we can be thankful for we can thank god that today is a new day that all the, we might have made a, a really bad mistake earlier in the week. We might have made a wrong decision on Tuesday, but today is Thursday. We've got a brand new day. Always something to be thankful for. So this is come to me with a thankful heart so that you can enjoy my presence. When we go into the presence of God, it's important for us to have a thankful heart. Sometimes some of us try to go into the presence of God and all we want to do is murmur and complain. And then when we go into his presence like that, we don't allow for his peace and his joy to overtake us. So it says, come to me with a thankful heart so that you can enjoy my presence. Not just be in God's presence. We want to enjoy. How many of you, when you get into the presence of God, you don't want to just be in his presence. I want, When I get into his presence, I want it to be enjoyable. I want that when I come Come out of there can't nothing touch me it don't matter what you say and what you whisper and what yeah i was in the presence of god it's like you come out with a force field anybody know what i'm talking about you know i used to play the, the video games i think it was um Galaga, one of them, that there comes a point that you can activate a force field so that even though all the bullets are coming at you, it's like you're in this protected. Come on, somebody. I'm saying that when you get into the presence of God and you step out of his presence, it's like you've activated a force field that even though all the fiery darts are coming from the enemy, they can't touch you. Come on, somebody. It says, come to me with a thankful heart so that you can enjoy my presence. This is the day that I have made. This is the day that I have made. I want you, this is God speaking to your heart, beloved, receive it this morning. He says, I want you to rejoice today. Here it is, refusing to worry about tomorrow. Come on now, we need to refuse to worry about tomorrow. The Bible tells us, why are you worried about tomorrow? Today is got his own stuff today has got his own challenges today come on somebody you know somebody told me some years ago and I never forgot it I remember it to this day somebody told me that when I find myself worrying ask myself what is it that you recognize you can't control come on 
Do I have any warriors with me? Not warrior, like in warrior. I'm talking about worry. You worry. You're a warrior. If you're a person that you worry, right, then ask yourself, okay, if I'm worrying, what is it that I realize I truly can't control? Because that's where worry come from, is we realize, it's like, wow, I've got this situation happening. I've got this circumstance. I've got this thing that's going on, and I can't control it. But here's the good news for all of us. We don't have to be able to control it because we know the one who does God controls it y'all so you don't have to worry about that person that ain't acting right you don't have to worry about that child that's behaving like they ain't never been in church you don't have to worry about that spouse that though they say they say they not be come on now you don't have to worry about that give it to God God says I got this I know how to work all things together, right? For what? For our good and his glory. So that ought to make us, when you find yourself in the place of worrying, ask yourself, what am I not giving to God? That's what I have to do. Okay, I'm worrying about it. Have I not given, have I given that to God? Because when we give it to God, when we give it to God, we can we can keep it moving. When we don't give it to God, that's where we get stuck and worried. God says, I want you to rejoice today, refusing. Somebody say, I refuse. Come on, I need you to flow with me this morning. If you, if you refuse to worry about tomorrow, say, I refuse. God, I give it to you. I refuse to worry about tomorrow. God, just give me the grace. Give us this day our daily bread. Father God, just give me enough for this day. Just, just give me enough grace. Your grace, you tell me that your grace is sufficient. All I need is the grace that is, that is able to give get me through this day tomorrow will take care of itself so i refuse to worry that's right you put that up in the chat you gotta say it and don't just say it but do it right refuse to worry give it to god whatever it is that you are dealing and struggling and meditating and nursing and rehearsing refuse to give it refuse to worry and give it to god it goes on to say, search for all that I have prepared for you, anticipating abundant blessings and accepting difficulties as they come. God, this, this is so powerful. It says, I can weave miracles into the most mundane day if you keep your focus on me. It says, I can weave, God says he can introduce a miracle into the most mundane, into the most ho-hum, into the most regular day that you've ever had. God says, I can introduce a miracle if you keep your focus on me. See, that's the challenge. A lot of times our focus isn't on God. Our focus is on the problem. But if we focus on God, God says that he can introduce a miracle, that he can change the situation just like that, that he can get rid of that individual that's been a thorn in your side, that he can change that situation in an instance, that you can get that phone call that shifts everything. God says that in the middle of a day, that seems like it was the... A day just like yesterday. This this is a new day. This is the day. God says if we will keep our focus. Come on now. What are you focused on this morning? He said if you will. Listen. When we focus on God. It increases our level of expectation. Somebody said expectation. Did you wake up this morning? Expecting God. Did you wake up this morning expecting God to show up in a way you've never seen him show up? Yes, last night you laid down with the problem. This morning you got up. It may still be there, but where is your expectation? Do you get up expecting God to be able to do something amazing, something out of this world today? See, that's how we got to wake up every single morning. When our focus is on God, our expectation is in God. Here's the thing what I have learned, that wherever our focus is, that's where our expectation lies. Can I say that again? 
Wherever our focus is, that's where our expectation lies. So if your focus is on a person, a person that you hope will change, you want them to change, you need them to change, if your focus is there, your expectation is in them. But we got to get our eyes off of people, and we got to get our eyes off of men. If you if you focusing on the fact that, that you're not getting paid enough hours on the job, then your expectation will be for them to do something different you got to shift your focus baby you got to focus on god god says i can weave miracles come on anybody but still believe in miracles signs and wonders this is the god we serve he says i can weave miracles into the most mundane day if if see that's important if if you keep your focus on me and then it says, come to me with all of your needs. Come on, all of our needs. You know, sometimes we, we will come to God with certain needs and, and then other ones we kind of keep to ourselves because what? We want to fill it ourselves. We want to fulfill it the way we want. You understand? We have a way that we want that need to be met. We, we have a way. Can I tell you, if I got any single people on here, don't you know God knows you got needs? He, from being a, a single, from a single standpoint, he know that you have need to be affirmed, that you want to feel love, that you want some attention, that you want some affection. Listen, when God says he can take care of all of our needs, he's talking about those needs too. But see, if we don't give God a chance to meet those needs because we out there trying to fulfill them ourselves, then you will never know that God is able to take care of every single need. Every need, financial, physical, emotional, spiritual, mental. God says, I can take care of all, not some beloved, but all. Have you given God all of your needs or have you just given him the ones that you think is just spiritual? So I'll give God my spiritual needs, but my physical needs, my financial needs, I'm going to take care of them. Come on. Am I talking right to somebody this morning? You've got to give God all of your needs. He says, come to me with all of your needs, knowing that my glorious riches are more than are more than an adequate supply. More than an adequate supply. Here it is. It says, stay in continual communication with me. Stay in continual communication. Do you all talk to God throughout the day, y'all? That's just real talk. I know sometimes we get up. And we do our devotions and, and we pray and we talk to God. But when you say amen and you get up from your bedside or you get up off your knees, do you close the door to God or do you keep the lines of communication open with him all day long? I don't know about you, but I cannot go through my day without tapping into God. There are times that I just, sometimes it's just, it's quick, y'all. I'm just saying, I, I don't always have the time in the middle of the work day to go jump on my knees. But sometimes I be like, Sometimes it's just that quick prayer. Oh, God, help me. Okay, God, I'm about to say something I shouldn't say. Help me, Holy Ghost. Okay, God, I'm about to, I need to make this decision because they're asking for me to give my input. And I, Father God, give me the wisdom. Help me, give me discernment. Is there something I'm not seeing here? All day, y'all. We need to talk to him all day. We need to keep continual communication. That's what it says. Stay in continual communication with me. Here's what it says. So that you can live above your circumstances, even while you are in the midst of it. Come on. Anybody in the midst of a circumstance? God said, if you stay in continual communication with him, continual communication, that he will help us to rise above our circumstances. That he will position us above the situation. Come on, somebody. Anybody need to be above your circumstance this morning? Because where you, you feel like you are consumed, you feel like you are overwhelmed. God says if we will keep continual communication with him, 
He says we'd be able to live above our circumstances, even while we are in the midst of them. You know why that's important? Because sometimes we're looking for God to deliver us out of the situation. But can I tell you something? It's the that very situation that he didn't deliver us out is what he is using to do something in us, right? Sometimes the situation that God has us in is because there's something in us that he wants to change. There's some, So he's not going to snatch us out, but what he can do is rise us above it. That even though we're in the midst of it, come on, even though we're still in it, the circumstance is still happening. That person is still being mean. That situation is still looking dark, whatever. But God says if we stay in continual communication with him, he can bring us above it. <laughs> it makes me think about that song by MC Hammer, right? Can't touch this. That even though you're in the midst of a situation, that situation is not in the midst of you. You understand? That that even though you're going through and, and, and that situation is tough, right? That situation doesn't have the ability to bring you under. That situation may have knocked you down, but it didn't knock you out. That's right. He is. He is building our character, sister. You said that absolutely right. Every situation is an opportunity for us to become more like Jesus. Every situation. Do you know sometimes we'll be in situations that's not even like, when I say not our fault, I'm saying sometimes we're, we're in situations because other people drag us into it. We're in situations because of how other people are behaving. But guess what? We're still in the situation. And you could be right, beloved. You could have done nothing wrong, but you're still in the situation. So you didn't do anything wrong. What do you do? You say, okay, God, since I'm still in this situation, what do you want me to learn? What is it about my character that you want to be more Christ-like? It doesn't mean we've done anything wrong. It's just an opportunity for us to be more Christ-like. It's an opportunity that maybe if we need to humble ourselves, it's an opportunity that maybe we need to forgive somebody who's not forgivable, somebody that we don't believe deserves forgiveness. There's always an opportunity to build our character to be more like Christ. So that's what I'm saying. Sometimes God may not deliver us from the situation. He'll deliver us through it. And the way that he delivers us through it is in dealing with our character. It's in dealing with our attitude. It's strengthening us. It's making us more like Christ. Y'all have flown with me? And then he says, finally, present your request to me with thanksgiving. That's huge. That's huge for a lot of us right we know how to go into the prayer time with a whole list of things that we want from god and there is nothing wrong with that because he says it here he says Pre present your request but how are you presenting it that's important when you go in and you say oh god you know my spouse is behaving this way oh god i'm so lonely oh god this is happening on my job oh god my finances my... but when you do that how is your attitude are you presenting this stuff but 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 with a heart of thanksgiving that says, okay, God, all of this is troubling me. All of this is making me sad. But God, I refuse to not give you thanks today. I refuse to steal your glory. I refuse to not say thank you for waking me up this morning. You know, here's the deal. God, I'm coming to you and, and I'm I'm complaining about all these bills, but thank you, I got a job. Come on, somebody. Can you find something to be thankful for? We can just be thankful that God is God. You know, <laughs> I had somebody uh, comment on one of my posts the other day, and she came in to tell me, you know, how she thought God felt about, you know, what I said. And and all I could do was respond and say, well, praise God. You know, God didn't assign neither you or, or me to think on his behalf. <laughs> Like, seriously, 
easily. I was like, well, I'm glad you're not God. You know, I'm glad I'm not God. I'm just saying we ought to be grateful that God is not like humans. We ought to be grateful that he didn't assign some human to judge us and, and decide whether we're worthy to come into his presence. That's why the veil was torn, y'all. So we have direct access to him. So we can go into God ourselves. And so when we go in, we should never lose sight of his faithfulness, of his love, of his, his loving presence, of his his forgiveness. We should never lose sight of those things. When she said that to me, I thought, well, praise God. I'm glad that you're not God. And I'm glad that God didn't appoint you to, to you know, to be his, his thought person. You know what I'm saying? It, I'm just amazed at some people. Just, uh, okay, thank you. I appreciate your input. But you need to know, I, I say what I say and I do what I say because I believe that I'm led by God. And I'm not saying that I'm I'm above, you know, apologizing. If I said something and I thought it was God, I missed God, I was in my flesh. No, but what I'm saying is I thank God that you are not God's spokesperson and neither am I. I I'm, God didn't appoint me to tell you that what you said is is wrong. You know, it's a, I'm not thinking for God. The Bible tells us that God says that his ways are higher than ours and his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. Man, who you are thinking you can think for God. I'm just saying, yeah, I don't try to represent God in that kind of a way. I don't know what God is thinking. All I do is I make sure I say his word because his word is his word is his word. Amen. So he says, present your request to me with thanksgiving. Come on, y'all say that with thanksgiving. Present your request with thanksgiving. That's the part we don't miss. And then it says, when we do that, my peace, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart and your mind. Anybody on here just need the peace of God? You know, sometimes you say, God, I just need your peace. He just told us how to get it. He just told us that we, his peace can be ushered in, that we can experience. Come on, anybody right now, you need the peace of God? That maybe you need to up your Thanksgiving meter. <laughs> maybe you need to increase your, your heart of Thanksgiving. Because that's what it says. It's God said, I don't have a, a problem with you bringing your request to me. He wants us to. You understand? So God says, if you will bring your request to me, but do it with a grateful. Thank me for what I have already done. Thank me for what I'm doing right now. And thank me for what you expect me to do. If we go to him and we say, God, these are the things I need. But I thank you for what I already have. It tells us, the word says, that his peace that surpasses is all understanding that means his peace in the midst of that situation that hasn't changed will guard our heart and our mind come on anybody need your heart and your mind guarded this morning god says if you will just thank him let him know what you need but thank him his peace will come busting through the doors his peace will come in and overwhelm your heart his peace will come in and take over his peace will come in and replace all that chaos and all that worry and anxiousness his peace will come in and refuse and, and and remove that confusion and that fear his peace will come in come on y'all just say God, I just, I just received your peace this morning. I thank you for everything, God. We thank you, God, for your faithfulness, God. Father God, we thank you that you are God. We thank you that you are all-knowing. We thank you that you are all-loving. We thank you, God, that you throw our sins as far as the east is from the west. We thank you, God, that you are our healer. We thank you, God, that you are our provider. Father God, you are our one true, true source. Yes, you use other methods like a paycheck and you use people, but you are our source we thank you god for everything that you are to us today you are our protector god you are our comforter god we thank you today come on just 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 lift up your thanksgiving to him this morning that's what this is about this morning we are just giving him thanks let's not forget to give god thanks yes god we bring our request to you and we we admit that we need you father god we need to see you show up in some situations in our lives we've got some 
circumstances. But Father God, after we've let our requests known to be known to you, God, we just thank you. We thank you, God, for being who you are. We thank you, God, for another day. We thank you for another opportunity. We thank you for opportunity to do things again, to do over, God. We thank you for another chance. We thank you, God, that it wasn't the end of the road, but it was a bend in the road so that we can continue, God. If you didn't take us out, God, we are still here. We thank you, God. So, Father, I just pray that as we just lift up all this thanksgiving in the atmosphere this morning, that your peace that guards our hearts and our minds in your son, Christ Jesus, will just rush in in the midst of this life this morning. Cover your sons and daughters in your peace this morning, God. We receive it, God. Holy Spirit, we just breathe in your peace this morning. We thank you for your peace this morning. We thank you. That help us to not focus on what's going on around us, but just to receive your peace today. Father God, I speak your peace, supernatural peace that surpasses all understanding over your sons and daughters under the sound of my voice this morning. We thank you, God, and we praise you. We thank you for your peace that is beyond our understanding. We thank you, God, and we praise you. We glorify you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. So we just give God thanks this morning. That's where our peace comes from. That's Listen, you want to walk in peace today? That's the key. That's the, that's the avenue. You know, a lot of us are looking for equations. You just got your equation. You want peace? Ask God for what you need and thank him for what you have. Amen. That's what the word of God says. So listen, if this live blessed you this morning, please don't forget to share it with others. And I look forward to being with you all tomorrow morning so we can wrap up the week. Amen. It's going to be Friday and we would have made it and the weekend is on the way. So thank you all. Thank you for my hair. Thank you. I got it done yesterday. I appreciate you recognizing that, LaToya. God bless you, sweetie. All right, I pray you all have an awesome day. Yes, have an amazing day. I love each and every one of you with the love of the Lord. Have an amazing day. And thank you always for allowing me to speak into your lives. I'll speak with you later. God bless you.